What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, thanks for coming back. So today's gonna be a super, super exciting video. And as you saw by the title of the video, uh, we finally picked up a new project and I couldn't be more excited to get to it. Um, but before we get on that, uh, we actually have to do a few things. Um, over the weekend, I went to the junkyard and I picked up uh, a few things. Actually, I actually had already picked up this. This is a uh, trim piece and we're actually gonna show, uh, save this for later. But I actually picked up this uh, dash pad for the, uh, for the OBS and it's actually in pretty decent condition. It does have some cracking, but it is way, way better than the one that we already have. It has a huge crack running down this whole part of it. And uh, like I said, this one's in actually pretty good condition and for 10 bucks, I can pass it up. And it's a pretty easy install. The hardest part about it is that you do have to pull the, um, the radio but other than that, it really is pretty easy. Now, funny story about this, um, I feel pretty stupid. Like I said, you have to pull out the uh, radio and the truck that we pulled this from actually had a uh, CD radio, uh, like an OEM stock CD radio. And if you know anything about those things, they're actually pretty expensive. And I knew that they were kind of expensive, but I didn't know how much they were. And I really wasn't interested because I don't need one of those. So, while we were pulling, trying to get the uh, dash out, we were having a hard time pulling the radio out and I accidentally completely destroyed it. And I feel so bad because like I got back home and I was like, man, I really wonder how much those uh, radios go for. And I looked it up and they go for like about 200 bucks. And I'm like, man, I really should have saved that thing and at least like sold it. But anyhow, we at least got the part that we wanted. Like I said, it's in super good condition. I'm probably gonna give it a good cleaning because um, it is a little bit stained and stuff. So I do get, I do want to give it a good uh, cleaning. And then we're going to head over to the OBS, pull the old dash pad, throw this one on, and then we'll get to showing you guys the new product. Like I said, I am super, super excited about this. And it's actually a truck that I never thought I would own. It has three features that I, ne that I never thought I would actually want in a truck and that I would actually buy a truck like that. Um, but things kind of lined up. If you saw my, my last video, um, I talked about if these things were worth it or not, you know, and like the value of them and all that. And uh, I don't know if the point that I was trying to make really came across, but basically the way that I the the, the way that I stand on it and what I, what I was trying to say is that I think they are worth it. One, if you can get them cheaper, but they're worth it if if that's kind of like your hobby, if that's what you want what you want to do with, and that's your passion then it is worth it. And if you want to have something a little bit more unique than what you can go and buy from the lot, especially for the prices that the new trucks go for, because if the, OBS, if the OBSs are expensive, the new trucks are ridiculously expensive. And to me, those aren't worth it. To me, personally. Just because I'm just not big into newer trucks, basically. Like, I know the technology, the power, everything that they come with. I know that they're absolute beasts but I just don't think they're worth, a truck should be worth $100,000. Um, but like I said, that's just my opinion. Like I said, I'm, I like the older trucks. Anyways, hopefully it, what I was trying to say came across. And if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Uh, leave your opinion on it. Let me know if you think they're worth it. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyways, I, I digress. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna get this thing all cleaned up and we're gonna throw it on the OBS. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually remove the uh, glove box. It makes it easier to get um, to all these bolts back over here. Uh, you don't have to do it. You could probably squeeze your hand in there and get them, but it just makes it way easier and it's uh, pretty easy to remove it. So you basically just push in the sides and I think you have to go all the way down so you might drop all your crap. So now with the glove box out of the way, um, I don't know if you able to see, but you have all of these uh, nuts on the back side of this thing that you gotta take out. So basically all of these, it's uh, four nuts all down this way that you have to take out. And like I said, it's pretty easy. It's a 10 mil and actually some of mine are already loose. So I'm gonna take out the ones that were, like I said, already loose. Okay, there's one. Okay, that one's actually tight. A horrible angle but anyways we finally got this uh this final nut out of the ones that you can reach without pulling the uh the headset also i should add <laughs> that it wasn't completely necessary to remove the whole glove box i don't know why i even tried doing that you can just let it uh hang just like this so anyways like i said 
all of these nuts are now out so we gotta move on to actually removing the headset again sorry for the freaking glare guys on the screen it's like I have, i'm parked in the worst way anyways i'm gonna get my tools for the uh headset removal and we'll pull this thing out okay so as you can see we got our um head unit out using our little tools uh usually if you have a uh, an aftermarket head unit they should have come with these things and if your truck uh already had it hopefully the previous owner had it like in the glove box or something um if not they're pretty easy to get online and basically the way that you got to use them is you kind of sandwich it between the head unit and the little frame that it comes with and you kind of find the little tabs that it has and then kind of pull in towards the inside of the head unit on both sides and then just pull it out hopefully that made sense um but yeah this thing is now out we're gonna i'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all this stuff so i can have room behind the dash and hopefully we can get this thing out okay guys so this is where we're at i'm actually going to take this frame out too because the two nuts that we got to take are like right there and right there and it's just going to be way easier without having all of this in the way so it's actually pretty easy it only has a couple of tabs they have to bend back up there 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 and basically just all around it um so like i said like i said we just got to pray pry on these things bend them back up and take this whole thing out okay we got this thing out of the way and now it's way easier to get to these two nuts they're basically right here and right there so i'm gonna go ahead and get them out and that should be the last thing that we can do and that should be the last thing that we have to do before we can actually pull the pad out all right we got one and now we just gotta get the last one And there it is. As you can see, it was pretty, pretty messed up. Uh, we're actually gonna go outside and compare the uh, the old one to the other, not as old or at least as messed up one. Okay guys, so as you can see, the big difference is this crack. It is huge. It was basically going all the way across the dash pad. And on the new one, uh, it still has, like I said, a couple cracks, uh, but it's not nearly as bad as this one. Plus, I am going to be keeping this one and using it to kind of, I guess, prototype or learn how to fix these cracks. Because if I can fix these cracks, I can for sure fix uh, that. Plus, I have some ideas on stuff that I want to do uh, with this and with the interior that this will really help me kind of plan out. Anyways, well, first, we're going to throw this on. But first, I'm going to go ahead and clean all of this because it's the perfect time to kind of give this thing a nice good cleaning. Because as you can see, it's full of... Um, dirt and just crap so i'm gonna go ahead give this a nice wipe down and then uh, and then we'll move on okay guys as you can see this thing's developing a pretty serious crack going all the way down the uh, dash again this is a very common uh problem with these older trucks you know all this plastic doesn't uh fare too well especially in the um arizona heat um dry heat <laughs> but this is something we're not gonna do anything about this right now because this is something that we're gonna address um once this truck's basically torn apart to do the interior, uh, we'll be finding a way to fix this. As well as just a lot of the stuff, you know, that we really hate about these old interiors. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead, throw the uh, new dash pad on. And we'll basically be done with this. Already looks better. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh. It's a good idea if you remove the um, old hardware. <laughs> I'm just too excited, guys. Okay, guys, so we got the dash pad installed and it looks way better. Um, like I said, obviously it does have those cracks, which kind of sucks, but like I said, for $10, you really can't beat this. Um, and just that big old crack right here just really, really looked bad. And uh, I'm actually super happy with it. Uh, one thing that I did do though while I had all this stuff out is I installed a little microphone for my uh, radio. Um, so when I when I bought the radio and installed it, uh, it came with the microphone, but I really didn't want to install it because I never liked the way that 
it looked like on the dash or over here. I just really didn't like it. And, uh, but after years of actually having it and kind of not having, not being able to talk, uh, hands free, I decided that it was probably a good idea to try and install it. So after looking around, I kind of found that this was a pretty decent little spot. You can't really notice it that much. It's kind of hidden within the gauges. Um, and we were able to route the cable pretty cleanly throughout the dash and out here. So hopefully that, uh, that will be a nice little upgrade for this old truck. And now pretty much everything has, but the install and everything's going to be the opposite of removing it. We install the dash pad, tie in it. We're going to throw the little cage for the head, uh, head unit, throw the head unit back on the glove, uh, glove box and we'll be done with this thing. Okay guys, I don't know where I left off uh, last time, but we are completely done with this install. The dash pad is completely in. And like I said, uh, it looks just way better. Like, like sure, it still has those cracks, but the fact that this is nice and clean now, uh, it's just, it makes a world of a difference. And um, I just checked, the microphone is working. Uh, the wife said that it is a little far away, so it might be a little far away, but she still can hear me and understand me, so that's good enough. Uh, but yeah, everything went in pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And that is basically gonna be it uh, for this. Now we can go and check out the new project. So let's go. Okay guys, real quick, before we get to the truck, I just want to let you know real quick that the track bar brackets will be back in stock by the time this video goes live. So if you go to blowindiesel.com, you can get yourself a track bar bracket and sway bar brackets for the 05 plus axles. Uh, so yeah, like I said, go check out uh, blowindiesel.com and get your stuff. Okay guys, we are back at my favorite spot to film these uh, talking videos. And uh, I'm looking at the truck right now and it looks, it looks good. I, I love the way that it looks. And like I said, this is the truck that if you asked me a year ago, just a year ago, I would have said I would never own a truck like this. And just because it's not my style at all, but uh, <laughs> over the past three months, my uh, my family arrangement situation has changed and I require a different kind of truck now. So I kinda, I've been looking around, like I said in my last video, I, I've been looking for a project, a new truck, and something that fits my family now a little bit better while still keeping with the, uh, well, you know what? Let me show you. This is what I got a 1993 F350 crew cab dually Centurion. I, that's how you say it, right? Centurion? Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, this is the new project to the channel, my new truck, and I couldn't be any happier about it. Um, so, like I was saying in the last video, it is hard. Oh man, it's really windy. Hopefully, the audio is decent. So, like I was saying in the last video, it is really hard to find a decent OBS at a decent price. And I feel like I got a really good price on this thing. It has excellent bones. Let's do a quick uh, walk around on it and I'll point out some of the flaws starting from this area. So it has a little bit of a dent right there. And then I feel like someone like slammed the hood on, some, on something or something happened, but as you, can see, as you can see, it's a little bent right there. And then obviously the paint is a little bit faded but uh, that's to be expected with the truck of this age. It's actually not that bad for how old it is. Um, I don't know if it's being repainted or anything. I know the dude um, definitely gave us my elbow grease before he sold it to me. So that's also probably why it looks so good. But also like, look, the roof and everything. Like it's really, really not that bad. And then check out the sound like solid and then they they open 
enclosed super solid same with these ones and uh it has whatever that thing's called and this is probably the biggest uh damage that this truck has um the dude or he blamed it on his wife uh they hit a um one of those yellow cones on a drive-thru which i don't know why you would take this thing on the drive-thru but they uh, hit it pretty bad but i think it's fixable i've been um educating myself on uh fiberglass and i think we can fix this i've actually always wanted to learn how to work with fiberglass and this is going to be a perfect perfect project for that um the bed uh although dirty it's in really good condition um all the seams they look pretty good uh, on my truck when i bought it it was completely just like cracked every seam on the truck was destroyed it was being held by uh self tappers and the actual bed of the truck you can tell you can tell that it had been used uh for work it was completely like way more destroyed than this this pretty much looks just like it's only scratched like it's it doesn't really have a lot of big dents i gotta pull this thing off um probably gonna get rid of it and actually bedline this whole thing um it has whatever that is damaged right there too um the tailgate's in pretty decent shape it has two dents right here and then this panel doesn't really line up perfectly it's also a little bit off right there the bumper uh i hate these bumpers i'm gonna get rid of it my truck actually had either the same bumper or one really similar to it and i got rid of it again like i said it's the uh centurion i don't know how you pronounce it but it's that package and i'll talk a little bit more about that but this side is actually really good again the fender a minor hit on there we'll also fix that but way better than the other side uh actual no real big dents on here it has this thing it has a small dent right there uh but in really really good shape and no rust at all i'm gonna show off to you guys up north and i'm gonna show you the underneath of this thing it is super clean hopefully you can see uh but yeah super clean not a spot of rust the frame obviously the frame obviously has a little bit of a uh, surface rust that's absolutely nothing that a wire wheel can't get off some of the bad is most of the tires are pretty much shot on this thing they're not really good so we're gonna have to get new tires but uh, that's something that we're gonna address with something a lot better than that okay lastly the interior is one of the things that i hate uh the most about this thing i absolutely hate hate all the wood and as you can see i actually took one of those uh this panel off of that side and i'm gonna do the same thing on this side like i don't know what they were thinking uh putting this on like that it's just it doesn't look good to me at all and then it has a pretty good crack on the door panel right there so we're gonna so we're gonna have to fix that too uh we are gonna get rid of basically the all the seats on this thing all i gotta say these are so freaking comfortable um this this is basically what they call a freaking couch in your truck this is these seats are incredibly comfortable uh which is gonna be kind of sad getting rid of them just because they're so comfortable but they're hideous i love I, I hate the way they look as well as that stupid center console that thing too it's gonna be gone and then it also has the wood on here again i i freaking hate it um i mean maybe this here on the back might work if we like freaking stain it like a nice color or something but i don't know i don't really like it i kind of rather have the stock stuff the hand the headliner is freaking mint it is it looks really really good like it's it's really nice so again like i said this is a centurion package again i don't know how to pronounce it properly but basically what that gave you is pretty much an, an appearance package and then everything that i just talked about in the in the interior so i gave you this uh i think the paint or maybe not the paint but those decals they gave you that it you got this you got these handles those lights um as well as the visor and not really sure on the on the bumper guard i'm not sure about that or the rear bumper you might have actually got those things too i think you got that with the package but don't quote me on that and maybe that chrome too so basically everything that makes this truck look really 90s and 80s you got with that package um and i absolutely hate all of that stuff so i'm going to be getting rid of pretty much everything this is going to be coming off pretty soon as well as the bumpers um i actually have an extra 2017 bumper for the front 
and for the back um i obviously love the front bumpers and i'm not a big fan of the uh, rear bumpers or the super duty bumpers but i sure like it way more than this one so like i said we are going to be getting rid of this one just because just because i really really hate the way that it looks um depending on how bad the the bed looks underneath the bed rails we'll probably get rid of these things too and possibly these i might just leave the bolt in there i think it'll look better than these things um like i said the the bed area of this thing we're gonna get rid of the mat and bed line it and i also really want to get rid of these things surprisingly my wife likes them i don't know why i think they look hideous but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get rid of these, but they're gonna stay on as well as the visor until I'm ready to do uh, body work on this thing. Cause this, it, it's also getting painted. Um, again, it, it's really not my look. I've seen a couple on Instagram and they look really nice, super, super clean. But I really don't wanna invest the time and the money to fix this and make it look nice. I'd rather paint it all a nice color, which sounds kind of crazy because I've been saying this about my truck now for like two, three years, I'm sorry. But the, the single cab, that one's gonna get uh, painted pretty soon. I'm actually already in the process of ordering all the stuff that I need to get started on the paint job on that thing. I'm, I'm basically just waiting to finish the axle kit before I paint it because I don't wanna be working on the truck um, while after it's uh, it's painted. But anyways, um, I am super, super excited about this thing. And like I said, I got it pretty cheap and I'm gonna show you why I got it pretty cheap. You can already probably tell half the reason why it's a two wheel drive. Uh, so that kind of sucks. But the main reason why I got it so cheap is because it is a gasser. It's a 460. Um, and obviously these things aren't nearly as desirable as a 73. So it does suck that it's a uh, it's a gasser. But this is actually what I wanted. Because um, I, I saw a couple of trucks that were diesels. Um, but like I mentioned on my last video, uh, this project is, it's gonna have a diesel, but it's not gonna be a 7.3. It's probably not gonna be a power stroke either. And if it is a power stroke, I might sound crazy and you might say what the hell's wrong with this dude. But if I do get a diesel for this thing, it's probably gonna be a 6.0. But that's very, very unlikely. So honestly, I am uh, kind of leaning more towards a Cummins or a DT360. So it's really gonna come down more to what I can find. And right now it's looking like it's, probably gonna be a Cummins. I don't know when that's gonna start. I have to get everything together. I have to get the money because this thing pretty much drained me. Um, even though thankfully, like I said, it was pretty cheap. It was one of the cheapest ones that I found around here that it was in decent shape. And to be completely honest with you guys, I actually really enjoy driving it with the 460. It's actually kind of peppy. It has really good power. It, it actually gets up to speed pretty good. And this thing is, okay guys, <laughs> the biggest surprise that I had when I freaking test drove this thing and I drove it back home, I was in awe at how well this thing drives. Uh, this thing drives basically like a freaking Cadillac. It is so smooth, like incredibly smooth. Like I was cruising like a 75, 80, and it was just cruising like just, it was basically like a big old boat just floating down the road. It felt so good. Part of that is probably because probably half the suspension on this thing is shot. Um, I know that it needs shocks for sure, but the thing was just cruising down the road. Like it was just so smooth. Uh, again, like I said, those seats, they're freaking couches. They're so comfortable. And I am gonna axle swap this thing. Uh, it's probably gonna end up being four by four, but it, it's really kind of suck because I don't think I can make this thing ride any smoother than it already does. And on some of my older videos, when I was talking about my axle swap, a lot of you guys were saying like, hey, you don't need to axle swap it. These things ride, these things ride uh, pretty good already. And I didn't believe you guys. And if you have anything that looks like this, a crew cab long bed, um, I can probably see why you were saying that it, that it rides pretty good, especially if it's a two-wheel drive. This thing is a night and day difference to my truck, even with the axle swap. This thing rides way smoother than that other one, like way softer. So that was that was a pretty cool uh, thing to find out. Again, though, like I said, this thing is going to be getting axle swapped. Uh, at one point, I don't know. The axles that I want for it are kind of high hard. Uh, to find um, but I do want to do the axles before I do the engine um, just because I think getting newer tires and stuff like that for it will really 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 transform the look of this thing as well as getting rid of the things that I don't like like I said the bumper all this stuff that rear thing I really don't like it either but like I said it's a super nice straight clean truck with really really good bones like I said it has no rust at all whatsoever it has been taken care of pretty 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 good 
and it's actually pretty low mileage so i don't know how well you can see but it's got 136,000 miles so that is really nothing the guy that i bought it from he told me he was a pastor really nice guy um and he said basically all he used it for was to pull his big fifth wheel and stuff like that um which it does have a hitch in the bed of the truck which is pretty cool because um at the end of the day that's what i want this truck for uh for towing i don't know what i'm gonna tow yet because i don't have anything to tow but uh, i do want to have a truck that will be ready to tow for when we are ready to you know tow stuff i'm super happy with the truck um unfortunately it does suffer the same fate as our other dash the dash pad is also cracked but um like i said i'm gonna be experimenting with that other dash pad that we took out to hopefully find a way to fix this um i guess talking about the interior it actually has uh the color of interior that i really really like this uh like tan interior and then it has the uh the silver trim to it now the only problem with that is that i used to really like that and and i still think it's the best looking of the uh interiors in the obs trucks but I don't know what I'm gonna do for seats. I guess I could do those kind of like Lariat, uh, like F-150, F-250 seats. Those will look probably pretty good. Um, but again, I'm really not sure what I am gonna end up doing with, uh, end up doing with this thing, with the interior. But I, it's definitely one of the things that I wanna address uh, first. Because like I said, I do want my family riding in this thing and I want it to be comfortable and I want it to be nice for them at least uh, in the inside. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm super super happy about this thing guys. I'm super excited to get this build going uh, Well, one thing about this thing is that it's definitely a 460 um, Again, I bought this thing about 40 50 miles away from the house and like all the gauges everything were just you know Super solid they didn't move, you know, it doesn't get hot doesn't do anything weird, but the uh, The fuel gauge that one definitely moves a lot, but you know What? What else can you really expect? It's a 460, dually, long bed. It's almost the heaviest configuration that you can get, get in this thing. Pretty much the only thing that would be heavier than this is obviously the four-wheel drive diesel. But um, yeah, she's definitely uh, a little thirsty. <laughs> Anyways, what I, want, what I want you guys to do is down below, leave me a comment and tell me what you think about this thing and what you think we should do with it on the channel. Um, again, like I said, I'm super, super excited to get working on this thing uh but i really do want to hear from you guys i want to know what you guys think about it um how you feel about it and uh take a guess how much i paid for it uh anyways like i said leave a comment leave a like let me know what you think and also don't forget to go to blowingdiesel.com to get your stuff because i definitely need your help guys uh building this thing and the more you buy from my, from the store the more stuff that we can do to, that we can do to this thing um so yeah i'll see you for the next one